Welcome to this series of training videos developed by the Cochrane Common Mental Disorders Group at the University of York in collaboration with Northumberland Tyne and Weir NHS Foundation Trust and Tees Eskin Weir Valley's NHS Foundation Trust. We hope that these videos will provide an accessible resource for helping you develop critical appraisal skills when it comes to understanding and reviewing research in your clinical practice. We have produced six training videos to cover fundamental aspects of critical appraisal for different experimental and observational research designs. Because different types of research questions require different study designs, each video will provide a dedicated module looking individually at systematic reviews and meta-analysis, randomised controlled trials or RCTs, and cohort studies. We will also take a look at case control studies, cross-sectional studies, and diagnostic studies. Each video module will provide a summary of these different designs and situations in which they may be best employed to answer a research question. By making reference to examples, we will walk through how to critically appraise different research designs using recommended tools to help us do this. By using these video modules, we hope to equip you with the critical and analytical tools needed to appraise findings from research, involving the weighing up of evidence to assess its validity the trustworthiness of the results, as well as its potential value and relevance to your practice context. By way of learning outcomes, at the end of these videos, you will be able to firstly understand and discuss critical appraisal concepts and its role in evidence-based practice. Secondly, you will be able to understand different research designs and be able to answer questions like, have the researchers used the most appropriate methodology to answer their research question? Finally, you'll also be able to appraise results of research, its validity and its relevance to your practice. Specifically, we will provide guidance in using the Critical Appraisal Skills Programme Checklist, also known as the CASP Checklist. By learning these new concepts and familiarising yourself with a sample of accessible critical appraisal tools, you will be able to answer questions like, how would I rate the risk of bias and the quality of this research? And would this affect how confident I am in applying the findings into practice? In this video, we will be more broadly introducing the topic of critical appraisal and the important terms you will encounter. So what do we actually mean by critical appraisal? Fundamentally, it is the process of carefully and systematically examining research to judge its validity, the trustworthiness of the results, and its value and relevance if results are applied in a particular context. Being able to critically appraise research is an essential skill for use in evidence-based practice because it allows clinicians to find and use evidence reliably and efficiently. These are the three overarching key concepts of the appraisal process and are predominantly used by the review checklist that we will take a look at over the coming modules, as they are applied differently depending on the type of research you are appraising. We will briefly explore these concepts individually in order to help you start thinking about the ways you can apply them in practice when making your own critical appraisals. When we talk about validity, this refers to the soundness or the rigour of a particular study and the extent to which the conclusions of the research are true within the specific context the research was undertaken. This is also known as internal validity. A more valid research design method and procedure produces less biased results, giving us more reliable, generalizable conclusions. Questions you may ask relating to validity may include, is there a clear statement of aims in the research you are appraising? If authors of the research have not provided a clear research question that describes the population of interest, the intervention given, or the outcomes of interest, then there could be cause for concern as to the validity of the results of the research. You also want to be clear of the methods used in a study to make sure they are suitable to answer the question that is being posed. For example, if you are critically appraising a study that is looking at the effect of an intervention, you would be right in thinking that a randomised controlled trial would be the most reliable way to measure treatment effect, because these trials aim to reduce bias by randomly allocating participants to treatment. However, it may be the case that the authors of this type of study may well have stated that they randomised participants but did not provide any further details as to randomization methods. This may not necessarily mean that authors did not use appropriate selection and randomization methods in the conduct of their research, 
but if their methods are not reported clearly, it makes it difficult to fairly assess validity and may impact the conclusions of your own critical appraisal. As a reviewer, it would be your job to make a judgement based on the published research that is available to you as to how reliable any conclusions of the research might be and whether participants relevant to the research question were selected appropriately. You will also want to appraise how trustworthy you find the results being presented in published research. First of all, you will want to know clearly what the findings are, but also you will want to know how precise they are. Depending on the research question being asked, data may be qualitative or quantitative, observational or interventional, and this will influence the method of data analysis. For example, if we were appraising systematic review and meta-analysis evidence for the effect of an intervention, we would want to know the statistical measures used and make an assessment as to whether they were undertaken appropriately. We would also want to know whether the author's statement of findings are accurate and precise assessments based on factors such as the size of the p-value and the confidence interval, as well as the overall quality of the evidence. In the field of evidence-based practice, we would also want to be critical about how the results of research fit with the existing body of evidence. If results of a study were to entirely contradict established evidence-based practice, you would want to consider why this has happened. You may ask whether participant populations and treatments were similar enough in an interventional study, or whether in a case control study, exposure was accurately and equally measured between groups. Finally, what can we determine of the practical relevance of the research findings? Who can the findings be applied to beyond the confines of the article you are appraising? And can they be applied locally in your own practice context? When you are critically appraising research to consider whether to make use of findings in local practice, you will want to investigate whether the study setting and participants covered are sufficiently similar to your population. Consider the outcomes. How are they defined and measured? Who are they important to? And are they similar to outcomes that you, your clinical team and your patient want to achieve? By being mindful of the potential differences between the research context and the context in which you would hope to make use of these findings, you'll be able to provide a thorough and considered critical appraisal that could positively impact on your evidence-based practice. Though we have only touched on some very broad issues relating to critical appraisal, we hope we've got you thinking more about how to start approaching research. In future modules, we will focus on specific study designs and spend more time exploring these different concepts and how to interpret and apply them in critical appraisal. Critical appraisal is a valuable skill for health professionals and commissioners as part of their work in evidence-based practice. Much money and many resources are invested in undertaking healthcare research internationally. However, not all of it is of good quality. It is important to be able to a identify which study design is most suitable to answer a particular question, b identify the various sources of bias that may impact on the reliability of research results, and c be able to judge the value and practical relevance of research findings. Only when we know how to locate, interpret and make sensible best use of knowledge that is available to us can we put it into practice and start making a difference to the way that we provide high quality evidence-based healthcare. The second module in this series will look at systematic reviews and meta-analysis and we will start putting critical appraisal concepts into practice. We will also demonstrate how we would critically appraise a systematic review using the CASPER checklist with the opportunity to test your learning by appraising a selected review using the methods we'll discuss. Thank you for listening. These training videos have been developed by the Cochrane Common Mental Disorders Group at the University of York, with support from Tees Eskimo Weir Valley's NHS Foundation Trust, Northumberland Tyne and Weir NHS Foundation Trust, and the Economic and Social Research Council. If you would like to test your knowledge on the topics introduced in this first module, please follow the link below the video, which will take you to a short online quiz.